What's up guys, in this video I get the one tire fryer running, install a header, remove the roll hoop, and this thing rips. Enjoy the video. <laughs> So before we get started on today's header install, I got something cool to show you guys. This is really cool. Check it out. It's the Bird and or Phoenix Engineering logo. And it's in giant sticker form. Big shout out to Matt Trotta and his brother. A Matt Trotta is also known as Skull Drinker on the on the DIY Go Karts forum. So big shout out to him and his brother for making these for me and sending them out here. They turned out really well. And what I'm planning on doing is they're different sizes. I'm planning on sticking them sticking at least one of them in the floor pan right here in kind of a Pontiac Trans Am screaming chicken style. And just from looking at it right now, it'll fit nicely, and I can tell already it's got to look sick. So, yeah, and so I got two big ones. I think one of them might be slightly different size, but then there's also two little ones. So I'm thinking about maybe putting one of them on the blower housing of this thing. I'm not sure. It, I might just I might just keep it put on something else. But yeah, that is really cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna take off this old muffler. And then on goes the header. There we go, that's off. You can see there's a lot of carbon going on there. But it's fine. That's nice and solid on there. I know this is a header brace, and it's supposed to bolt to one of these head bolts, I believe. Or maybe there's supposed to be a bolt that goes in that hole, and I can use that. I'm not sure what that's for, by the way. But, this should be ready enough to, to give it a shot. So... There it is. Oh man, that looks way better. You can see the post, one of the posts there where there's the other one where it used to be connected. And yeah, oh man, this thing looks way better. Like I knew it was gonna look good, but I didn't think it would look this good. And that gas tank just looks perfect there. I mean, that gas, that I need to do something about that fuel line, but man, awesome. Here's the old beast of a roll hoop. I'm probably just going to throw this out. But, uh, wow. This has been on my mind basically since I got this thing. That roll hoop was so ugly. I am so glad I finally got around to completely removing it. Well, almost completely. But I can't remove these posts right now because um, 
because you can see here that the seat back is actually welded to the seat post. So it actually means it's structurally integral because this would be way too weak with just these two little tack welds here. So I've got a neighbor that has a welder and angle grinder and stuff. So whenever he's ready, I'll take this over there and then we can cut all this off, probably that too, and uh, cut off this, and then we can weld the seat back back to here. That will basically complete the restoration. I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I'm at this point. I'm actually kind of digging those big rear wheels. I'm not sure if I. <laughs> Don't hate on me for saying this, but I'm actually kind of liking the look of, of these big old fat tires. I don't know. I may or may not change them. But, um, yeah, give me your opinion down in the comments. It, it, I don't know. On one hand, I think they look kind of cool. On the other hand, it's still a bent axle and brake shaft, so. But, I mean, this thing looks way better. And also, another good thing is that, see, with this thing, if it were to roll, it would tear open the gas tank. Like this, basically probably there but that is a safety hazard but here in the event of a roll it would this would at least be protected so it's unlikely for this thing to roll I'd have to be like drifting and hit a curb at high speed because these tires are all dry rotted <laughs> they'll slide before they grab really so it's unlikely that'll roll but in the event that it does at least the gas tank will be protected but, uh, yeah, unfortunately I can't do anything about the engine being exposed out there. But, uh, yeah, this thing is awesome looking now. All right, here we go. First test drive with the, um, with, uh, with the Bubba parts removed. Lost an engine bolt somewhere. That's problematic. So there's the drive wheel, right? I was doing some takeoffs on here on the. It, well, I mean, granted it's smooth concrete, but look at this. Definitely tire marks. That is awesome. This thing's got so much torque that it can spin the tires a bit, even with the high gearing. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nuts. Figured I'd get this kill wire hooked up. So before it was just kind of hanging down here and then we come over here up into the engine. But now it's coming on here, coiling around, and I tied it up here. This is actually jewelry stringy. I found it in found it in a toolbox, but it'll work for my purposes. It's nice and strong. And I add some black electrical tape here. At one point there was um, another time that I was working on the kill switch, it was it was blue electrical tape. I figured it should be black to match the frame. And then there's a little more jewelry stringy to hold it down. And then, of course, it's attached up here to the coil. And so, yeah, this is all nice and tied up now. It won't get in the way anywhere. So this thing is starting to look 
<laughs> like really nice. The main problem is this, the pillow for a seat bomb. I need to do something about that soon. All right guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell for notifications, and um, comment and share with your friends. Uh, let me know what you thought. And um, tell me, do you think I should switch to the back to the original size rear tires on this thing? I don't know. I'm kind of liking the, the meaty look of them, but at the same time, they're not original. So give me your opinion. And uh, I got another project to share with you real, real quick. I'm going to make a decade video once I get running, but uh, here it is. Oh, three horsepower Briggs flathead. I got this thing off Craigslist. If you're on the DIY go-karts form, you've already seen this. But um, it was listed as an eight horsepower tiller motor, so I didn't know any better. I took one look at the codes, and it said not, it starts with nine. So the lower housing says nine cubic inches. So uh, that means three and a half horsepower. So either way, I got for th for thirty bucks, I believe. And then when I got home, I realized that this is not the original blower housing because I was looking at the codes and I realized it was for a vertical engine. So this is off a lawnmower. It's a Frankenbriggs because see, blower housing is kind of maroon. And the engine's white. It had a had a, a belt pulley right here before. So yeah, it's a um, three horsepower flathead. Don't know how old it is. It's uh, it does not have the magnetron ignition can't see in there, but it does not have the Magnetron um, all-in-one ignition system. It also has a point system behind the flywheel to, to supplement it. So it's, um, so yeah, it, it, it doesn't spark. It, it shocks me, but it's just not enough for the, to fire the plug, so I need to get in there and pull up the flywheel and work on the ignition system. There is gas in the tank. I, I can't let it sit too long. And uh, that's, it's an old vacuum jet carburetor with a push-pull choke. It's a pretty old carburetor, so I take it, I think this thing might even be as far back as from the 60s or 70s. But uh, So yeah, this is going to go on the radio rod, and that's going to be a pretty cool little project. And I can't wait to see this thing running. But yeah, see you next time.